come before you this morning, oh God, in great expectation, oh Lord God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for your presence in this place, oh Father God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for another day to come before you, oh God. Another day to lift up your name, oh Father God. Another day to glorify you, oh Father God. Another day, oh God, to worship you, oh God, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, oh God. Pour out your spirit in this place, oh Father God. Fill us again, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm reminded of your word, oh God, that says that we are to be holy as you are holy, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, that you have not given us a requirement, oh God, that we cannot meet, oh Father God. So Father, we ask this morning that you fill us again, oh God. Pour out your spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Fill us to overflowing, God, with your spirit, oh God. Fill this place, oh Father God. With your presence, oh God, touch every heart, oh Father God. Touch every mind, oh Lord God. Touch every situation and circumstance, oh God. Lord, bless it, oh God, to be used for our good and for your glory, oh Father God. Father, we anticipate your great move, oh God. We anticipate your glory coming forth, oh God, today, oh God. Father, release your word, oh God, that heals, saves, and delivers. Shift us, oh God. Continue to shift us. Continue to make us, oh God, in your image and after your likeness, oh Father God. So we lift you up, oh God. We say that you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome in this place, oh God. Have your way this morning. Do what you want to do, oh God. that you have set before us this day, oh God. Oh, Father God, I thank you and I praise you, oh God. Oh God, that it is well, oh God, with us and you, oh Father God. Oh, Father God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God. Oh God, we sense and we feel your presence, oh God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for your wind blowing through this place, oh God. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God. Oh, Father God, that you have given us yet another chance, oh Father God to get it right and to keep it right. Oh, Father God, we thank you and we praise you for that opportunity, oh God. Oh, we thank you for life and life more abundantly, oh Father God. Oh, Father God, we worship and we adore you. We lift you up and we exalt you in this place, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we reverence you, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh Father God. Oh Father God, that the word that will come forth, oh God, on this day, oh God, the life-changing word, oh God. Oh Father God, as we celebrate our apostles and our pastors, oh God. Oh God, in the anniversary of marriage, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for their great example of what marriage is and what marriage should look like for your kingdom's sake, oh Father God. Oh, Father, I thank you for their dying season, oh, Father God. For in their dying season, oh, God, they gave us a chance to live in you by their example, oh, God. And we're grateful for it on this day, oh, God. So we celebrate them as we celebrate you, oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
ministries we love you we love you we love you with the love of the Lord amen, amen. come on and give the Lord a hand praise this morning hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah.
there's power in the name of Jesus. He said, in my name, you will heal the sick. You will raise the dead. He said, you would speak in new tongues. And you will cast out devils. There's healing in your name. Healing in your name. So much power 
bless your name. I will 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 bless your name, Lord. I will bless your name. 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 I will bless your name, Lord. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. There's healing in your name. So much power in your name. Power in your name. There's healing in your name, Lord. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. So much power in your name. I will bless 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 your name, Lord. I will bless your name. 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 Because there's healing in your name. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. Power in your name. There's healing in your name, Lord. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. So much power in your name. I will bless 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 your name, Lord. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. Because there's healing in your name. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. Power in your name. There's healing in your name, Lord. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. So much power in your name. I will bless 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 your name. Because there's healing in your name. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. Power in your name. There's healing in your name, Lord. Healing in your name. So much power in your name. So much power in your name. I will bless 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 your name.
Come on, lift those hands, honey. Say, fill me up. Fill me up. 
overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I will see. 
Abba. I lift it up, Lord. Only you can quench the stars in my the door and there's a desk in the hallway where I always leave my keys I couldn't find my keys this morning I dug through my purse several times I went through my book bag looked up in our room looked in the kitchen and finally I came to the conclusion that my daddy accidentally picked up my keys when he was on his way to church I was angry then I was frustrated and then I said, let me just stop and sit down and get out of my feelings and get in the spirit. I sat on the couch and I began to worship the Lord. And I began to pour out my heart to the Lord. And the presence of the Lord filled the living room where I was sitting. And I felt things began to fall off of me. I got up, 
went and fixed me something to eat, took my medicine, drank some tea, and I went to my purse to get my lip gloss. And when I reached in the pocket to get my lip gloss, there were the car keys. And I said, wow, God. You know, it was very humbling, but I believe the Lord wanted me to acknowledge him and get out of my feelings, get out of my flesh. And sometimes we are carrying weights. We don't be carrying things the way we supposed to carry them. And we began to get burdened down with, with unnecessary burdens. But when we bring everything back into focus and we sit and we be still and we be quiet and we began to cry out to the only one that can give us what we need, he always comes. He always meets us at our point of need. And sometimes we get so busy. Sometimes some fall and some backslide. But no matter where we are, when we make a conscious decision to acknowledge that God really is God, he always comes. And I just want to thank you for always coming when we need you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He meets us at our point of need. And I'm so grateful for someone that is so loving so wise so patient someone that knows every undone part of me but he still loves me he knows me completely and he still loves us he still loves you he still loves me we can never forget our need for Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we come. We come to you, Lord. Hallelujah. To we come to thee. Will you all sing this song with me? It says, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour. Every hour, Lord, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. As I acknowledge my need for you. As I come to you, God. I need come on and lift your voices. The oh, I need thee. They used to sing this when I was a little girl.
and I'm just worshiping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay every burden at his feet. Lay aside every weight. And the sin that so easily besets. So that we'll be able to run with patience. The race that he has set before us. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord.
is surely in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. at this time. If you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hands and the gatekeepers will assist you. Also today we are celebrating our pastor's 20th wedding anniversary. Amen. Amen. So you may bring any love offerings that you have at this time, or you can um, bring them all throughout the, uh, to the end of the service, amen? 20 years, praise the Lord, 20 years. So you're in the hands of the gatekeepers. announcements for the week of September 30th. Immediately following service today, Amplified Disciples are having a dinner sale. We'll have ribs, mac and cheese, cornbread and green beans, and a drink, all for $10. Amen. For questions, see Prophets Tyrone and Tivoli Spikes. On next Saturday, October 6th, the Women of Excellence Gathering We'll be here at the church from 1 to 3.30 p.m. Uh, the City Gospel Mission is Monday, October 8th at 7 p.m. For question C, Pastor Tammy. That's me. Amen. <laughs> Women's Fit for Jesus, Mondays and Wednesdays is at 6 p.m. Saturdays at noon here at Forever Praise Ministries International. And the instructor is our very own Pastor Tony. Amen. Come out, come out and get fit for Jesus. Amen. And remember, it is our pastor's 20th wedding anniversary today, so let's celebrate them. Amen. Ready? Amen. We're going to have a dance selection by our um, very own Glorious Praise dancers. Amen. And the next voice you hear, we'll hear after this will be Prophet 
Shanti Prather. Amen. God bless.
give the dancers a hand clap, please. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I give honor to God who's ahead of my life for allowing me to stand before you again with a sound mind and a whole heart. Amen. I first want to uh, give acknowledgement to my wife. <laughs> you know, we have been through quite a season over the past few years and you know I just want to say before the people today that I love you and I honor you so you'll know that amen and to my pastors Apostle Andrew and Tony Loshavo two warriors for Christ that God have called them after their own heart Amen. Pastors that's called to come up against religious leaders and raise up a church of disciples to follow their lead. Amen. And that's why we are here today. Pastors that focus not on our behavior, but our identity. And look to your neighbor and say, my identity is the key to everything. And look at your neighbor and say, my identity is the key to everyone. Yes, God. This is when you begin to understand your identity in Christ. It's like a light switch. Everything begins to change. You begin to see things differently. And I will say that I know my identity. And I will start off by saying this testimony. I have come out of a season. A season of darkness that was in my heart and God really had to deal with me about some things concerning my youth it had nothing to do with the church it had nothing to do with people it had everything to do was what I was not surrendering to that was God and I was not surrendering my old nature, my spirit man, and be an example and an identity that God has called me to be from the moment that I got saved. For the Bible said that when Jesus died, he died. He died for sin once and for all. Once and for all. And you got to look at that has the words. When Christ died, he died for us and as us. So once we became to Christ, once we came to Christ, our old nature was already done with. He had done it. It was over. But we kept choosing to pick it back up, whether it was in anger, whether it was in lust, whether, whether it was in perversion, whether it was in Whatever was contrary to God that we held on to that altered our identity, we were not supposed to be warring against the thing that God had already killed. Amen. The Lord began to reveal to me about my silent anger. You know, he began to reveal me about my pride. And thank God for leaders and prophets that will hold you accountable. And you know, when you are 
dealing with these things, it's a spirit. It is a spirit that God told me that it's a religious spirit is what it is. And this religious spirit will cause you to stuff all the things that you need to deal with because it's too much of a hassle to bring it to the surface. It is what it is. I spoke against that very thing. I wonder how people fall into a religious spirit and operate and do certain things and be in the church. And that very thing fell apart. We need to be in prayer for those type of things so that they don't captivate us. We need to guard our spirit because a religious spirit can get on any one of us and we can come in and show up to church and perform and leave out the same. And that's the problem. We, the religious spirit alters our identity, alters our perception of what the word tells us because if we believe that Jesus died for sin once and for all and all things are become new in in Christ amen and the old nature is of the past then we our fight becomes different it is it becomes easy to war against the things that we allow to coexist with our faith so I want to say to you after these last seven days of prayer consecrating and giving glory to God for what he have done in his house bringing us into a new place I will say welcome to your new place welcome to your new place and this is a place this new season this is a place in a season of overcomers means we have overcome we're no longer looking at our old nature because we believe now right that our old nature was dead when Jesus died on the cross so we should be able to walk in the fullness of our identity amen it isn't God is working on me it is I have become I am who God called me to be I don't need to work on my old nature no more because he killed it already. This is the mindset and the understanding that we, as the body of Christ, will have the very moment you really just understand and uh, submit to your identity in Christ. It's submitting to God is everything. My, the identity in God is everything and to everyone around me. Amen? We have to be examples of uh, a, a ascended lifestyle because that's what Jesus did he died for us so that we may be ascended with him amen and it's time to, to, to war against the things again that we allow to coexist with our faith that causes us fear causes disbelief that causes anger that causes us to do things that we shouldn't and we need to make sure that we are accountable to the leaders that we are under. From the prophets to the intercessors to the apostles. Amen. It isn't always, see, we, we, we get angry when we, when we feel attacked. We feel attacked. But I tell you this, when the, what God has revealed to me is when the prophet gives you a word. It's the Holy Spirit speaking. It's the Holy Spirit calling out your behavior. He's not calling out your behavior. He's calling you up to your identity. And that's what the Lord told me. I said, it ain't about what they're saying. It's about what I see in you. And I, what I see in you is the only thing. It is the only thing that you can embrace. If I see you this way, why do you see any different? Why do you doubt me? Why do you doubt me? In the name of Jesus. Romans 6. 
And I'm going to read Romans 6, 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. Say in the newness of life. This day we live a newness of life. This day we walk in, our, in the fulfillment of our identity in Christ. That we may be an example to the world, an example to the ones that we are called to, an example to the lost souls, an example to those who, are, who, who don't know Christ, to those that know Christ and have fallen astray. The example that we set by walking in our identity, identity is where they will meet Christ. We are, we are set out to, to do this thing so that people can see Jesus' light in us. So we have to be the lights on this dark world in this dark time to bring people through and to bring people to Christ. Amen. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe, we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ has been, been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer had dominion over him. For the death that he died, he, did, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. The life that we live today, we have to live it unto God. There is such an intense urgency for time right now as if you have to live every day as if it's your last moment you have to live every day as if it's your last moment and if I if your last moment is not with Christ then most likely there's probably a religious spirit that calls you to come in here every day sit in the same place me sit on the same piano and perform and leave out the same and it's the truth of it because we can very well be in the last day today and where are we am i am i am i am i full in the fullness of my identity if i leave out of this building today where am i in my last day So God has given us permission to consider ourselves dead. But a religious spirit wants us to have permission to consider our old nature is still alive. So we can come to church and, 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 and leave out with our old nature. And I've lived this. Whether in my mind, in my heart, whatever and come back and do the same thing over and over again because I didn't give that thing up to God. That's the bottom line. So the Lord wanted us to know that our identity in him is everything. And it is the key to everyone. If our apostles had not accepted the example of being what it is to be in the, identify yourself with Christ, to walk in true identity 
in true inheritance, where would I be? I wasn't always where I should have been, and I could be a lot farther along. But I'll tell you today, today is the day to choose your, to be what, be who God has called you to be. There, there is no time to say he's working on me no more. He can't work on nothing that's already supposed to be dead. If I'm working on something that God has already killed, that means I didn't want to give it up anyway. And this is the mindset that we have to have walking into this new season. Overcoming. Overcomers. Conquerors. More than conquerors. Amen. Yes, God. For this spirit has been worn with the identity of God's people, causing us to do to be contrary, to believe contrary, to have doubt, to have fear, to be double-minded. For he has called us to this house to be a pillar to, to regions and to nations, to come up against the religious spirit following the example of our leaders. Believe who you are in me, says the Lord thy God. Abide in your identity and I will abide, abide in you. Believe in who you are, and I will move for you. You shall speak, and it shall be so. And in the name of Jesus. And I believe I have said what the Lord has called me up here to say. In the name of Jesus. And those of you, if it's not even everyone to stand, that has, wants to walk in the trueness of their identity, stand to your feet. If you are ready to walk in the newness of life, not looking back on the old things, stand to your feet. If you believe that God has already died for your sins, that has died to that old nature, in the name of Jesus. I will ask Prophet Emmanuel, is he in here today? In the back. Prophet Ryan. And if you need prayer, that your identity may be strengthened, come to the altar. Prophetess Angela, Prophet Tyrone, Prophetess Kelly. What am I? You kind of wish I prophetess Tony. What am I? Lift your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. God really wants to do something in his people today. He wants you to have a heart changing experience with him, a mind changing encounter 
because it is already who you are. Every word that God has spoken over in our lives, he spoke it because that's how he saw us. He saw us no different. Just lift your hands. Prophet Samuel, could you come up please and pray? You are who God said you are. And this is who we shall be as a body in these days. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a sound from heaven. There is a sound. From heaven, there is a sound oh, from heaven, Lord. He reigns, He reigns in you. He reigns in me like a river.
Prostě. Out of her belly flow, out of her spirit, Lord, oh, flow. Oh, no more fear, yeah. flow.
your hands for the word identity Amen. thank you God our identity is everything everything to everybody the key to our identity is everything is in everything and my identity is the key to everybody. Amen. If you don't believe, some of us don't believe what God says about us and get upset when other people see us different. Amen. But if you can't believe what God says about you, why do you expect everybody to see you different? Amen. Hallelujah. What we believe seeps out. It doesn't matter what you're doing if you if you believe that you're weak weakness you can only talk with weakness walk in weakness walk in fears and you know it's fruit behind what we believe 
If you believe that God is, you have the fruit of it. You talk it, you walk it, you look like it, you sound like it. When the going gets tough, you stay in God. Amen. You know where you live by your what actions. Amen. So we thank God for, you know, just taking the time to deal with us, proving himself to us. That's what he does. He takes the time to get to us to say, I'm here. That's not how I see you. That's not how I view you. This is what I have. This is, these are the faults that I have towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen. It's an expected end. All of us don't get to that place because we have to believe in that place. Amen. So I thank God for taking the time. Had he not, where would we be? Oh, no. I don't believe it would be a church if he didn't take the time with us. Amen. Okay, do we have an announcement? Thank God for my hubby. Thank you, Jesus. It was tough, but God. Amen. But God. Amen. He had been enjoying the live streaming. Amen. And so I thank God for the word of God and everything that God is doing in this hour. Amen. The way may not be easy, but if we continue on the way that God has taken us, he'll see us through and he'll bring us out. Amen. Amen. Any announcement? And guess what? My son, our son, Andrew, will be 18 tomorrow. Our actual anniversary is on Tuesday. His birthday is at Monday. And our second year anniversary, we were in the hospital with him. Amen. And I was happy because I had a son. Amen. So I was very happy. They say, well, I said, I'm happy. I got a boy. Amen. So that's our firstborn son. Amen. Amen. And then here comes Zachary seven months after that. I was very shocked. Another boy? A boy? Two boys? And I love my kids. I know you. I love my children. I love my grandson. I love my husband. I love my life. I love my church. I'm very happy in the, in the good times and in the bad times. I'm happy. Amen. Because it's a beautiful thing when you know your family loves you. Amen. And so I thank God that when I leave this church full of people that love me, I go into my home with people that love me. So I'm always surrounded by love. And I'm certainly grateful and honored to have spent the last 20 years with my God-given husband. Amen. My God-given husband. I, I love my husband. You know, one, at one time he said I was the worst thing that happened to him. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Thank God for the blood. I turned it to somebody. You know, and Pastor Sean was saying, uh, talking about identity, and he used to tell me when I went into a season of anger because I didn't get my way, I didn't want things. I wanted things a certain way, and they were not the way that I wanted to be, so I turned on him. Amen. And, and I remember just going through that season out of control. You know, and he used to look at me and say, this don't match. I know what I'm doing to you, but this here anger, this is what you're going through. He said, it's not matching what I'm doing. And so I, he waited for that season for me to come out, and I became the best wife that he could ever have. Amen. I became it. And I had determined to change for him to glorify God. Amen. And so I, there, there are times that we go through things and maybe some of the hardest things, but it's the very thing that God uses to change us. Hallelujah. He used him to change me, to cause me to see, you know, you look, you acting like somebody else. You know, that's not who I called you to be. But he had to go that way. It took him. Amen. And so sometimes God will use the things that we love and that you allow in your heart that you became open and vulnerable to. And then guess what? He allowed things to happen. I say, now grow in it. Grow in it. 
So I'm grateful for the, the, for the last 20 years with my husband that I know my husband loves me. How about that? Amen. It's a be- all women can say that I know my husband, I know my husband loves me, and my husband knows I love him. I get on him sometimes, and he get on me, but it's no love lost. Amen. We never think about giving up on one another. I fuss, but guess what? It's a God thing. And I'm very grateful. Happy 20 years of marriage. Only God, and I love him. Amen. I love him more today than I ever loved him. How about that? The older he gets, the more I love him. And the more handsome he is to me. Okay, everybody. I thank God for I have a handsome husband. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to bring it down. Ladies, like, go on and talk that long. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I think Pastor Tony has said it all. Um, so now we're going to open the floor for um, anyone who has... Uh, Words of love they would like to share, and we will start it out. So I'm calling all the ammo bears to come up, front line, sorry, to come up. Apostle Andrew and Apostle Tony, we love you both so very much, and we're so very honored to serve you, and we're proud of you. We're proud of how you lead your family, how you lead the church, and how you honor God with your lives. You're an inspiration to all of us, probably not more so to us than others, but it feels like <laughs> It feels like it. So we love you and we honor you and we congratulate you on 20 years. Here's the 20 more. I'm going to speak real quick on behalf of the Blackwells. Um, I just want to say how much I honor you guys or we honor you. Um, I'm speechless of the words to say concerning um, my spiritual parents. I'm really, really um, speechless, but right now I just want to say that um, we, we feel like um, you birthed us into who we are today because of your love, your unconditional love. And the one thing I can walk away saying is you treat us the way that God has anointed you to treat us. Just like God loved us and he loved everyone equally and there's not anything God ever want to do for you that he do for me and that's the way she treat us. She treat us individually and we all feel the love. Dad, love you. Love you all so much and how can I leave your children out? I thank God for you all because you all are a true example of your parents and I always bring you all in the picture because I honor you all too um, and just your position and allowing us to love on your parents and I know they give you all the love but we just want to say from the Blackwells we love the LaShavo family. I just want to say I'd said it earlier in prayer. I thank God for um, you all dying. Um, your dying is what allowed me to live. You're dying to what you thought was, you know, best for each other to die for this church, to die for the people that make up this church. I'm so grateful for your example of what marriage really should look like because I didn't know what marriage really should look like until I got here 
and um, just see the love, the unconditional love that means a lot to me. And just keep being who you are for the rest of your lives because it looks good on you. Amen. And I also am very grateful uh, for you two. You know, ever since I uh, met y'all, my life has been completely, has done a complete 360. And you know, I just, I give honor to God for y'all, for the brothers, Mariah, you know, y'all changed my life. You know, because of y'all, I understand and how a family, you know, just the different values of family, yeah. <laughs> You know, y'all just taught me things. I've grown since I've known y'all, you know, and, you know, my wife, my children, you know, here because of what y'all poured into me. What y'all have poured into me helped me to understand who I am, you know, just even with everything. Even when I didn't understand things, when I was getting rebuked, and beat up on and stuff like that when I didn't understand it. <laughs> Even when I didn't understand it. Amen. But, you know, I, I, I'm grateful and I honor y'all too. And I'm glad to be a part of y'all life. I've known y'all nine years of the 20 y'all been together. So I'm thankful for that. Amen. So we pray the family. Soraya, Peace, and Gabby, they ain't here. If they were, they will say it too, but have a blessed anniversary. Amen. Apostle Andrew and Apostle Tony, on behalf of the gatekeepers, we want to say happy anniversary. Amen. But on me, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be who I am. Um, and the message today was so real, Pastor Sean, because the spirit of religion, it keeps you from knowing who you are. But I thank God that through my process, that the both of you have loved me. And I'm continually to do what God wants me to do. And I love you so much. Amen. I want to thank God, give him praise, honor, and all the glory, and just thank him for my special apostles. I thank God because I've been knowing them almost nine years now. And I thank God that when I came into the church, I left another church because of, of church hurt. But I thank God. When I came in, Pastor Tony loved on me so much. It scared me. It scared me so much. I had to sometimes, you hooked me, I would try, I should tell you, try to back up a little bit, you know. But I thank God that when I came in and Dad, he was just so loving, also hugging on me, laughing with me, and showing me a father's love. God can show you a father's love, but he'll give you a father on earth that'll show you love. And I love you guys so much. I can't, I mean, it's beyond what I can say. And I thank you for my husband, because it was a time he didn't want to do nothing but just sit down. I thank God that when he came in, how y'all encouraged him. He said, I don't want to do nothing. Don't ask me to do nothing. Don't look at me. I'm not coming in there to do nothing. And I said, everything that God wants to get out of you, he's going to get it out, Paul. And he said, please don't push me. I said, I'm not pushing you. God gave you a wife that loves you, and I do love you, but God loves you more than me. He sent you to me. Remember, I didn't go looking for you. He sent you to me. Hallelujah. And I thank God for Paul Gaston, my wonderful husband. I want to bless you. We love y'all so much. I'm telling you, press down, shaking together, blessing for he and evermore. Amen. I just want to thank you for your example of strength and support, showing how to be a father and how to be a husband and how to be a mom and everything. 
just thank you for everything. Happy anniversary, mom and dad. Thank you for your vulnerability. You, I've never had uh, pastors or met leaders that were so vulnerable, not only about the good times, but the bad times and the hard times and the knockout drag outs, uh, the stick to and determination in your heart because you knew the glue that held you together was Jesus. And to God be the glory for your marriage and for your family. First family, thank you. We love you guys very, very much. And um, may your latter years be greater than your former years. In Jesus' name. Apostle Andrew and Apostle Tony, I thank God for bringing me here in this house seven years ago. And I thank you for um, your truth. I thank you for your love that you give to each and every one of us. And I thank God for you because, you know, you continue to pray for us. And even when you don't speak to us directly, your presence is constantly with me. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for the prayers for my family. I thank you for supporting me as God is continuing to work in me and through me. And may God continue to bless you all for another, for many, many years to come. You know, and that may you always find joy. May you always find peace. And may prosperity always be yours and your oil never run dry. In Jesus' name. you and say things, but I want you both to know you are truly an example of godliness to us. It may not always look like it, but because of you, I see the growth in our marriage, and I see that God is bringing us a mighty long ways. And we are just so grateful to have the two of you in our lives, and that God brought us here, because I used to couldn't get this man to go to church. So I know <laughs> that God had a whole lot to do with it, and it is because of you all being our pastors that we can honestly say we are blessed. Amen. <laughs> Apostle Tony and Apostle Andrew, um, I don't have my card yet. I will bring it on Tuesday. <laughs> but um, when I became a member, it will be seven years November. And I can say when I first saw you two, kind of spooked me. Because <laughs> I remember trying to, I'm sure everybody been through trying to duck behind the chairs and try not to be seen, feel like you're going to be called. And just every time you walk past, even to this day, you just feel the authority and the presence of the truth. And um, I'm going to make this short. I thank both of you uh, because I know I've been rebuked many, multiple times, times seven with Apostle Tony, with my negative ways and things that I didn't understand. And I'm still learning, but 
Um, personally for me, just looking at you both brings, brings me happiness and makes me smile because I know that it's real. And I, I you two understand, but I pray hopefully when my marriage that it will be a resemblance to you both because you guys are real and I don't doubt it at all. I know it's real and I, I pray one day it will be restored in the way that you two are. You're a great example of pureness, love, and how to walk with God. And I can't wait to the day that I will be like that as well, like you two are. Thank you. Happy anniversary. I just want to say thank you. Thank you both. I, I am so grateful to be here, to be un, and see such great examples. And um, I'm appreciative of the things that I've been brought out of. I am so grateful. It's a new day. It's a new day. Because I know, I know a lot of prayers has gone up for me. And I'm just very thankful. I did the production in the right on on spicy. I I did I did I did tell you a question. Um, Jesus will have work in here all the morning today. So I gotta go to church. So Jesus is at home all the day. So he's working here, getting ready, taking it. Don't not hear. Getting not ready. Not not close to it. Getting not close to it. I don't know that thing. Go ahead in. So Jesus is holding it. Amen. Apostles Andrew and Tony, on behalf of the Pastoral Care Committee, we want to say happy anniversary and thank you for being an example of godly love and a godly marriage. God bless you. Happy anniversary, Pastor Andrew and Pastor Tony. On behalf of the administration and communications team, um, we have a token of love for you all. This doesn't even amount to the way y'all have impacted each person in this ministry's life. And just 20 years is very amazing. Um, the thought of, be, of being married is one thing, but being a spouse is a whole nother thing. And um, to be honest, it kind of overwhelms me, but I know whenever that season of time comes for me, I will be ready for that. Um, to execute that, but y'all have been really godly examples of marriage and most of all true love, which sustain all. So love wins. Again, happy anniversary on behalf of the administration and communication team. And it's such an honor and a privilege to serve. And I personally want to thank the two of you for entrusting me to lead. Happy anniversary. Hallelujah. I love you all so much. Hallelujah. Only God knows how deep it is. I don't even know. I just know it's real. Hallelujah. And I appreciate your kindness. I appreciate the way you back me up. 
you know some of the insecurities, but you still push me. And I appreciate that, that you got my back. Hey, God know I got yours. God knows it. Hallelujah. And to the family, hallelujah. I never got a chance to say how much I love you all. Hallelujah. Even though I don't really say it, not around, not around you a lot, but I think of you often. And I just want to let you know, I forgive you for letting me eat them nasty jelly beans. I just wanted to say um, happy anniversary to the both of you. Uh, I didn't have a card, and you know that religious spirit was trying to get on me. <laughs> I said, no, I'm going to give my love off. You know what I'm saying? It's just a card, and I can give it to you on Tuesday. But God knows I love you uh, both very much. And when I see you all, I see hope. Hope. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs> Briefly, um, I just want to thank God for uh, the both of you, Pastor um, Andrew and Pastor Tony. Um, I was just thinking about my life. I said, God, I don't know if you're ever going to bless me with a husband. But one thing I can say, when he does, I'm ready. Just to watching you too. And, uh, and the family, I know that uh, I would be ready with no problem to serve my husband and to work with him in the bad time and the good times. And so I want to thank you, Apostle Andrew, for um, being unselfish. I love you. I love you when you walk in here. It's like you've never been gone. And I was watching one of the pictures up there. They was uh, showing different pictures, and it was uh, you at the table and the apostle standing over you. And I just saw a man of authority. And so uh, we really miss you. And we always pray. And we know what God is doing. And I thank you, Apostle, for teaching us how to pray. And walk in faith. And believe. Whatever happens, I tell you, you have really demonstrated the faith in everything that's taken place. And just by me watching, I'm like, wow. Okay, I know now how to truly be a truly intercessor walking in faith, no matter what takes place. And so I thank you, Apostle Andrew, and I love you both uh, for being the great spiritual parents that you are. And when I'm out and I'm sharing, and I just share, I'm like, I never have, I'm telling the best true spiritual parents. Everyone don't know and truly understand what a true spiritual parent are. And so you do uh, represent true spiritual parents. And we know that when you are missing, you are praying. We feel your spirit. We know that you are praying and covering us and, and, and protecting and covering your family and covering your wife. So thank you. And I want to thank the children, uh, the times that uh, we are here after church, and the unselfish heart that you have. Andrew. Zach, Samuel, and Mariah, thank you, the love that you have, and you understand, and I thank you, because you, you understand that the love that she is pouring out in us, amen. Amen, just want to wish you both a uh, happy anniversary on behalf of the Watkins. Um, I was just standing here trying to figure out what I was going to say. Um, but what came to mind, honestly, was classic. You guys have a classic, classy and classic marriage. Um, 20 years is fitting, right? They say anything 20 years and older is a classic. So 
Here's to 20 more years and more years and more years. Amen. God bless both of you. And Amen. will be a relic. Amen. Valuable too. you too. Um, I brag all the time about how um, I come from a good family and <laughs> the, the example of what a marriage really looks like um, that I've had that example and I have that standard to hold myself to whenever that happens for, for myself one day. Um, but I thank God that um, you know the older that I get the more that I see just how much your family can influence your mindset, you know, your your behaviors, everything. And so I'm just really grateful that I have that example of good times, bad times. I've witnessed them all. Um, but what I can I can truly say is that um, you both were wonderful examples of what it looks like to to love each other through the good and the bad. And I appreciate that. this has been um, I thank God I thank God that I'm alive today and, and only because of God and the people that he's put in my life first and foremost my wife uh, of 20 years today wow 20 years I was thinking about that the other night um Sometimes it seems longer, and sometimes it doesn't seem that long. It's hard for me to even say how I feel in my heart. I was blessed with a daughter, Mariah, a grandson, two beautiful, handsome young men, boys, I never thought I'd ever have boys. And that was a highlight of my life when you guys came into this world. And um, Sister Angela was talking about waiting on a husband. And uh, she's being patient. And that's a good thing because I believe God, as he works on you, Sister Angela, He's working on the right man for you. If you continue to be patient and trust him, and that was one of the things that God had shown me with all of us and with the church, being it that fellowship that he wants with us first and foremost, so that trust factor that we know that God and the people that he puts before us are going to take us the right way and down the right road. And as far as I appreciate what you all have said, about my wife, Apostle Tony, and myself. As far as watching us and see how we live our lives. And transparency, sometimes maybe I've been too transparent. But that's who I am, and I feel that's the best way to show you. I'm not perfect. I'm not even close to being perfect. I'm, in fact, I'm probably one of the most imperfect individuals on this earth. But what my wife and I together, that makes me, that makes us perfect almost. Almost. There's only one perfect person in this universe, and that's Jesus Christ, our Father. But with her, I feel perfect. Without her, whew, it's hard sometimes, you know. And... Uh, those that have walked closest to us, my wife and I over the years, they've seen the transparency. They've seen the bad times and they've seen some of the good times and uh, they've seen both and we've allowed them to see that. I know I have and I know my wife has. That's what I mean by transparency, to show you that we're human and we're people. We're not better than you. 
God, for some reason, he chose us at a time, and we're here, and we're here for you. And all I know is that uh, I thank God because I know I would not be here today if this hadn't happened over 20 years ago. We've known each other longer than 20. We've been married 20 years. We've been together 23, 24 years, actually. And uh, that's the longest time I've ever been with anybody. For real. And... uh, yeah, I'll leave that and go with that. I mean, that, that's double, over double what I've been with ever with anybody. And she's put up with a lot, I'm going to tell you what. And uh, especially over the last several years, and I'm not going to keep because I know you all want to, you're probably hungry and tired and everything, but I haven't had a chance to talk to you and share my heart. And uh, I just thank God for you, honey, because... Um, my God, I don't know how, she, how you, I know it's only God. It, it's only God, the type of person you are, because you have given your life to God. You're unselfish. She'll do everything for everybody else before herself, and that's me included. And a lot of times, we can be very ungrateful. You know, it's like, I feel like I'm one of the kids sometimes. Like, well, what about me? You know? And she's always thinking about me and doing for me. And she d- does for all of us. But to be needed that much, what? wow. I thought about that the other day. My son came in. You know, there's times when I first, when I first heard that I was called to the church, to the people, and I was a prophet, and a prophet's life was a lonely life because there's a lot of things that you just can't share with everybody. I said, well, that'll be easy for me because I've always been kind of a recluse. I never did have a lot of people that around me or a lot of people that I would hang with or anything. I was always just pretty much to my own or maybe I had a friend or something or a couple people. And I thought that would be easy. And uh, it gets hard sometimes. And... But sometimes I think we put a lot of that on ourselves because we get self-induced with things that are going on in the world and things that are going on within us. And, and then that's when that woe is me comes in and we start feeling bad and, and thinking that's when the devil has, that's his playtime in our mind. And um, these are just things that I've learned over the years and I hope by allowing you to see the imperfect the imperfection in me and us that that can help you to know that you don't have to be perfect you just have to do the right thing do what you know is the right thing and you've been taught well believe me you have been taught you the best you've had the best i'm just telling you you have god wouldn't so you all must be pretty special is all i can say Because God would not, he just doesn't do this for anybody. Well, he would, but he knows the type of people. And he told us years ago, he said, I'm going to bring Timothys to you guys. Pillars, people to help build the church. People that you can trust, good people. And I thank God we had a pastor come up. I think it was our sixth anniversary or something. He came up from Indiana. He couldn't even remember us from years ago from the School of the Prophets when we go down to his church. It was a white man. I don't know if you remember him. He preached up here. And after service, we, we were in the back, him and I, and he's sitting there. He says, where did you get such beautiful people? I said, God, we've never solicited people or even tried. We, by being obedient and following what God told us to do, he sent the people. He said, I'll send the Timothys. I'll send the people to help build the church, to help lift you up. Just as I carried the man of God's when I was armor bearer, just as I carried the man of God and held him up. I was told way back then, God was going to, like Moses, God was going to send people to help hold, 
to lift my arms and help me out in times. And I'm just forever grateful. And honey, I, you know, I know I've been a, I've been a handful. And I love you guys. I love my guys, my boys back there, all three of you, and and Mariah. It's been a blessing. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to serve you. Amen. God bless you all. Thank God again for the word, Pastor Sean. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Continue to pray. My husband will be having a procedure on Thursday, so we're going to continue to pray for him. As he go through that procedure, God has shown us that he is God. Amen. And so we give him praise. But Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory. All the honor belongs to you, God. Father, for you knew this time would come even before it came. And all power is in your hand, oh God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our spirit has discerned, oh God. Father, we know it is all because of you, O oh God. We thank you for strengthening the body, strengthening your people, that you will be glorified. We thank you for real identity is through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Now, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, keep us until the appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Um, my son Andrew, we have a cake for him in the back. So everyone is welcome uh, for a piece of cake. And if you desire, as we do with all the children, if you desire to put a seed in his hand, please do so. His birthday is actually tomorrow. Amen. So we thank you all. Okay. Cake will be in the back. Okay. Amen.